morning, my name is Matthew Mavity. I'm the Chief Officer of ACT Fire and Rescue and uh, I'd like to welcome you to a lovely day in Ngunnawal country. Um, Today is a really important day for us, an exciting day and uh, much like the Ngunnawal people and other families from this region who uh, had stewardship over these lands, we are playing our part in that today by announcing a groundbreaking appliance with sustainability and safety at its heart. So I'm going to introduce uh, a 1928 Dennis and then we'll get to the um, Star Act. So we'll give it away and we'll bring it So what you're about to see, I'll get out of your way so you can uh, see it. This is a 1928 Dennis pumper. It's um, had no crew cab. Uh, the crew sat on the back. The driver and the station officer were in the front. It carried no water and you got to work with an extinguisher. You'll see the lovely brass extinguishers at the back. It's not the speediest machine on the planet and um, you'll hear its warning devices shortly. Lee Summerfield's driving it, one of our elder statesmen of uh, ACT Fire and Rescue, who's with the Historical Society. <coughs> So you'll see it has excellent ventilation, but that's about all we've got to say uh, that's, that's true safety wise. However, 100 years or 95 to be more precise, gets used to the Rosenbauer RT or Revolutionary Technology Fund. The technology available in this truck is quite phenomenal. The availability for uh, the information to be brought to the commander in the truck and then delivered out on the fire front is uh, first rate. And of course, it's electric. So electric drive uh, with, of course, a diesel generator, a small generator in the back that can be used for the pumps as well. But mainly, of course, electric drive with all the technology that you would see come with a new electric vehicle. Rosenbauer at the forefront, of course, of this vehicle uh, and uh, working with firefighters on the ground. They actually embed firefighters in their construction team and their design team so we really know uh, the best uh, way forward for firefighters into the future. And of course they design it around the firefighters so you see for the first time firefighters can simply walk into the truck. They don't have to climb up with all their apparel uh, into the cabin of the truck. Down to the nuts and bolts. Um this vehicle has been built from the ground up, as the Commissioner said. Rosenbauer has worked with firefighters um, for basically safety as the driver of this vehicle. Um, it's community safety and it's firefighter safety. So pretty well working from the front backwards, I'll talk you through it. Um, street level entry to stop firefighters carrying heavy gear, having to climb in and out of a commercial vehicle that's been modified into a fire truck. So street level entry, the driver and the station officer who sit in the front, their seats swivel so they can hold briefings um, in a filtered environment, positive pressure cabin to stop um, any of the contaminants entering in. And as you know, uh, the World Health Organisation recently declared um, firefighting a cancer or carcinogenic vocation. So innovations like Rosenbauer put into this cab with high efficiency particulate filters and uh, positive pressure cabin keeps the crew safe. Um, Moving back from there, we've got ergonomic delivery and you saw all of the gear presented. You can operate everything from the master control panel at the front, including turning on the pump. Um, moving to electric drive takes away carbon monoxide, noise, vibration and diesel particulate out of our work environment. Another innovation for our safety. All of the storage is ergonomically designed. The tools on there, we have transitioned to battery tools. So from the hydraulic rescue tools or jaws of life that you would, might know them as, they've gone to battery operated. Again, removing um, high pressure hydraulic injection as a mechanism of injury, trips and falls from the hoses that drive the hydraulics and uh, again, carbon monoxide, noise and vibration for us and our customers. Uh, you heard the siren compared to the old air raid siren. It has what's called a rumbler in there, which is basically basically a big subwoofer so that uh, hearing impaired people and people wearing um, noise cancelling headphones and things like that can physically feel the truck through their feet and well insulated cars who oftentimes don't hear us anymore uh, feel the vibration of the vehicle as it responds behind them. So everything is keyed up for the safety of the firefighters and the community we serve and um, you might notice that there's no mirrors, for example. Everything's done by cameras. Um, innovation is at the heart of this, and Rosenbauer have thought of it from the bumper bar to the pump at the back. 
uh, whereas we no, never carried water before. There's zero water on that, and that um, Dennis pumper could do 250 gallons per minute. That's imperial gallons. This pumper can do 3,500 litres per minute, and it has 1,500 litres of water on board, meaning that we can get to work quickly and efficiently uh, to save lives and help Canberrans when they most need it. So I could not be prouder of the project team, uh, and that goes all the way through ESA, um, from the enabling environment of the Minister and the entirety of government, who have set us some ambitious targets that we intend to keep with regard to sustainability. So emissions is one side of sustainability, and the other side is not injuring our people, giving them a long and safe career so that they can um, serve the community well and uh, get the recognition for the dangerous work that they do. But um, we are innovating to give them the safest environment we can. So I'd next like to introduce Arthur from Rosenbauer, uh, so he can tell you a little bit more about their invention, which I'm um, sure they're extremely proud of. Arthur? On, on behalf of Rosenbauer Australia, I first and foremost want to thank the Minister and uh, Commissioner um, for the engagement. And uh, uh, to make it very short, I, I probably compliment the agency by engaging and the way they include the firefighters in the, in the design. It is important to state that this truck incorporates a lot of features in its design related to safety and oper operability of the truck that has been a uh, result of the cooperation with the firefighters of ACT agency. Um, uh, as far as the technical background, uh, uh, I have with me Mr. Herbert Pullinger who comes from our factory and design teams and he uh, can explain uh, design features that are specific to this truck and uh, what makes it extremely unique both in Australia and, um, and around the world. Thank you. My name is Herbert Pollinger. I'm uh, with Rosenbauer from Austria. came here yesterday uh, to really celebrate this event here. Uh, we started the project four years ago uh, and obviously I want to thank the Minister and the Commissioner for bringing such a great team together to really make this happen because this is actually really the first fire truck electric fire truck on the southern hemisphere. Uh, we have designed it specific, specifically for ACT, working together with their team and have this one brought now into a uh, position that it can go in service very soon. We started this project for this particular model about uh, 11 years ago, in 2012. Uh, Rosenbauer was preparing itself for the 150 year celebration of the company. The company was started in 1866, so in 2016 we wanted to celebrate uh, our service to the fire to the fire service community and wanted to design a vehicle as a concept how a future fire truck would look like so in 2012 we started looking at the safety looking at the cabin outfit to make the life of the firefighters safer more comfortable more ergonomic and it turned out that we will use an electric drive to make this happen and when we presented the vehicle in 2016 we were in the height of the diesel scandal in Europe and everybody was looking at electric firefighting or electric vehicles. And obviously we had the concept already done and in 2016 we started to really make a product out of this. And in 2019 we met the Minister Gentleman, uh, we met uh, Jason Jones uh, and the team from ACT. And uh, we really felt that ACT was serious to go into this direction, which is a huge change for the fire service. Not comparing the 100 year old truck to this truck, but even the recently delivered trucks uh, is a big step for the fire service. So it has to be a quite brave movement into this uh, kind of technology. But at the end of the day, and I think we heard this before, we want to offer the fire service a more safe, more ergonomic environment. And I think when the firefighters start working on this vehicle, they will have a very similar experience what we already had in Berlin or in Los Angeles, uh, where the change of this vehicle into the in the fire service brought a big positive uh, drive uh, for the firefighters to say this is something which is new to us, yes, big change, but on the other hand it makes our life so much better and so much safer. So Rosenbauer to be part of this makes us very proud and uh, I thank you for coming here and I really want to thank you, the, the, thank the Commissioner and the Minister. We brought some uh, symbols here. Ah. It's, a, it's a bit of a tradition for it's us. A bit of a tradition, so we have a, a Rosenbauer key. Uh, for the commissioner, <laughs> thank you very much. And for the I think I might hand this over to Mav now. I'm not sure he's going to let me drive the vehicle. <laughs> we made the key in a way that it doesn't fit in the vehicle, so nobody. <laughs> the official handover to you. Thanks the community is now man. safe. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. And thank you very much. Thank you. I have started um, getting it ready for registration. 
they're, this vehicle is not yet registered. There's some complexity uh, dealing with Australian design regulations. Like I mentioned, it doesn't have any mirrors. It's all done by cameras. ADRs just um, couldn't get around the fact that there's um, no mirrors. So there's a lot of things we've got to work through, but it's been a very collaborative journey. And um, bring it into service will take a lot of training and uh, like introduction of any new plant under WHS legislation, we'll work with our stakeholders to get this technology out there so that um, we can protect the ACT community with the best technology there is. So fire away, if I don't know the answer, I'll hand to my project team. Nothing? Excellent, we've done a good job. What's the range? So, it's got about two hours general duty driving, uh, so non-response driving on the battery. Then the range extender kicks in. It takes about two hours to charge it um, while the range extender is going. Then it would flick over again. You would not notice uh, anything in the dash except a light coming on on the control screen. It can do that um, three times. So basically, um, under normal driving conditions, up to about a thousand kilometres. And so obviously we've got to get this thing registered. How long timeline? Why do we think we're going to get this operation? We're looking at two to four weeks to get it registered, and then we'll enter into a. Uh, um, intensive training period for our uh, subject matter experts, so our driving instructors, our pump instructors, etc. And then they will roll the training out to uh, firefighters more broadly. And we've got 400 firefighters to train, so it'll take us um, a while to get it there. We are going to collect data the whole time. So um, because this is so revolutionary, we need to uh, get the telemetry out of the vehicle to see how it's performing. When we went, um, and Jason did a lot of work on this, Jason Jones, um, when we first looked at this vehicle, we compared its capabilities um, on paper to our busiest pumper in our fleet. And um, from that data, we estimated that it would only need the range extender twice uh, in a year. And um, so we've now got to check that against real life operation and the operational environment. So once we've trained the people, we'll get it out on the road. Uh, and so then once everyone's trained, no problems with standing, how long does it take to get the entire fleet looking like this? Um, well, again, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, like everyone said here, this is very uh, brave. We're a small jurisdiction. Um, it's not uh, well known, but the ACT was the first jurisdiction um, to go to 100% diesel, and um, we hope to be the ones to go to 100% electric. Uh, we do have another electric vehicle, not a pumper, following this later this year, about August or September, that will arrive. So in the normal scheme of things, it would take a decade for us to rotate through our fleet. Uh, which we replace one pumper per year. And uh, again, once we have the assurance of the performance of this vehicle on the ground, because there are variants that Rosenbauer uh, have, um, that we might look at different battery range or different capabilities. So once we have that data, we'll decide which way we go um, with regard to rolling it out more uh, fulsomely. What does it cost compared to the standard? I actually don't know the ticket price. It, it's, um, it's, am I allowed to say? <laughs> Yeah, it's about a million and a half. Um, and a standard pumper empty is about 750. Um, but you, again, when you're talking a value for money proposition, you cannot put too much value on firefighter safety and you cannot put too much value on an environment that's changing. And emergency service workers are at the forefront of the change in climate, whether it's increased storm activity or severity or whether it's drier summers or floods. So we have to play a leadership role in combating climate change and emissions. And sustainability is more than emissions. It is the longevity of firefighters. It is embracing technology to do things better and smarter, use less water, everything. So over its life, this will save about uh, 18,000 litres per year in diesel alone. And that's about 40 grand in today's money um, over a 15 year service life of this truck. Um, servicing will be less because of, it doesn't need oil changes and things like that. So there's a different emphasis on how it is sustainable in the background. Um, excuse me, are other jurisdictions going to be looking at the ACT from the states learning from us over the next 12 months? Absolutely, as they normally do, they will follow. Uh, so we. Um, we are very proud to be taking the first brave step and there is a lot of interest from um, fire services around Australia and indeed around the world. People are looking at this technology, um, so hence why it's so important to collect the data and monitor the operational um, integration of this appliance. Did you know if other crews maybe from New South Wales will be... Absolutely. Yeah, they're looking at how, it, how the rollout... 
yeah, there, there's, there is a great deal of curiosity and um, a lot of people wanted us to take our brand new truck to them and um, we decided that it would be better if they came to us. Uh, so we are going to be um, showing off the features of this appliance and we will share uh, information collaboratively with other fire jurisdictions. We have a, a very long and um, close tradition of cooperation with New South Wales. Uh, we were actually born of New South Wales. Uh, so we will be sharing in particular with them, but all jurisdictions are welcome to join us on this journey. Can battery power cut? Say again? Can battery power run at Jaws of Life on a heavy duty truck? Or? Yeah, yeah, so, um, yeah, so the, the, the Jaws of Life, or hydraulic rescue tools as we call them, um, can be charged on there, and um, they've got a nine amp hour battery, and they just click it in and we can change them over. So um, it, everything, like, we're trying to keep this vehicle as clean as we can. So the minimum number of hydrocarbons, the best um, ergonomic presentation and the cleanest environment we can have for our firefighters. How are stations going to need to be fitted out to charge? So, good question. Um, so we've started off on um, our number six station, so West Bell Conant has charging infrastructure for this appliance. So um, we'll be working with our stakeholders about how we roll it out and how we present the training, but that is a logical first location for this appliance so that we can plug it in and charge it. And it has um, appropriate accommodation for additional crews to work while we're doing the training. Um, then um, Dan Bird, who is a project lead on this, um, has been looking at the next best sites uh, for the electrical infrastructure so we can roll it out. Some places are easier than others. So our newer builds like Aranda and uh, South Tuggeranong and certainly um, Acton when uh, it's completed will have the infrastructure and some of the older localities where the grid is quite full uh, we'll look at, at managing our way through that as we um, advance into the um, adoption of this technology more broadly. You mentioned, uh, we, or we heard rather, I guess, the impacts of climate change and how we sort of need to adapt to try and, I guess, combat the potential threats that that will happen, uh, that that will uh, cause rather. But um, I guess in terms of the acquisition of this truck in particular, was there a particular turning point in recent years that made the ESA and the ACT government think, okay, we really need to upscale our technology in terms of uh, our firefighting capacity? Uh, yes, so the ACT, um, you may well be aware, leads um, the pack in, um, in climate policy. So whether it's uh, zero emissions um, or low emission vehicles, so the ACT has a high uptake on EVs uh, or low emission vehicles. And the government needs to set an example and, and um, uh, so the public service needs to set an example. And uh, the government has supported us in doing that. Um, things like the Black uh, Summer, and, um, and a period of relatively low uptake in Australia, about a decade of, of fairly slow movement on climate change has, um, has led to a more urgent need for the adoption of these technologies. And um, in recent times, let's call it in the last uh, year, just over a year, and you can deduce for yourselves why that might be, um, there has been a lot of policy change and, um, and Australia is moving forward to a lower emission future. In terms of, I guess, how many personnel will be able to uh, board the truck at one particular time when it's uh, going out to the So the, our standard crewing is a station officer and three firefighters, so one driving, two uh, who enter the fire or, or do the tool work when we're treating an emergency, and the station officer who comes up with the tactical plan and, um, and manages the incident. So this is, um, has four seats in it. There are variants that have larger um, seating arrangements overseas because they do things slightly differently. Uh, we call it a, a larger weight of attack, but this particular vehicle has four seats in it. Is there a lifespan for these uh, trucks at all or a use-by date? <laughs> uh, look, everything has a use-by date, even me. Um, Look, at the moment, that, that's part of the, the um, adoption of this technology. We, we need to see uh, how long the battery life will be under operational conditions. We're getting data from um, the Northern Hemisphere. So, uh, as Arthur said, um, Berlin, uh, there's one in Holland and there's a few in, um, in LAFD and um, the United States. Um, and they're left-hand drive, obviously, because um, the Northern Hemisphere, but they uh, are getting data back but there are variations in, in how these appliances are applied and how much water they carry, how much gear they carry. So we'll need to get that telemetry I was talking about. Um, but standard um, life of a pumper for us is 10 years frontline and then five years reserve fleet. And we would be hoping to uh, achieve that. Again, we'll let you know as we, um, as we work it out. 
We do know that batteries um, decay in capability over time and it, it depends how many cycles they go through. But the uh, technology in here, which I'm not allowed to talk about, is, um, is um, world leading and uh, sustainability in um, the first, second and third life of batteries. So the first life's in the truck, the second life might be removed and put on the side of a building um, as, a, as an EV storage, and then the third life is breaking it down for its component parts. So every part of the lifespan of this vehicle has been thought through and um, we will monitor the on-road application to see how well that gels with um, our estimations. In terms of, I guess, the uh, process of uh, getting the truck here, I think we heard earlier it was about 11 years or so in the making. Is, was that about right? And if so, what was that? What, if, what was involved in that consultation process? Where you did by by the EPAs? Uh, so it took us about four years. So Rosenbauer, um, as Arthur said, ha has been working uh, on this since their uh, centenary in 2016, uh, 150 years, wasn't it? Um, so um, the, basically they were looking at ways to keep firefighters safer. Rosenbauer are heavily invested in firefighting industry. Um, what they did was a diesel variant of this and an electric variant, and then when um, Europe announced, or the EU announced no more diesel after 2035, or no new diesel, I basically went with the electric and that gave all of the other synergies with regard to sustainability uh, emissions and, and basically a, um, a uh, less intrusive maintenance life. So our journey with Rosenbauer uh, on this particular truck has been about four years and you might note that there was a pandemic in the middle of that which made things a bit awkward. Um, and if, if we were locked down and Europe was open, then Europe had locked down and the production line would go to 20%. We had a lot of uh, transport issues. I'm sure everyone knows about the supply chain issues we've faced. So it has been a bit of an epic journey, but I think looking at the truck, you will appreciate how groundbreaking this is and how necessary it is to lead and to step forward. We cannot rely on what has served us so far to uh, lead us into the future because it isn't working and we are feeling the effects, whether it's riverine flooding uh, or Black Saturday situation. We, um, we need to act on climate now and we have to pay, uh, play our part. Are there plans to apply more of these trucks uh, in the near future? Is there a bit of a timeline? Or? So we, uh, well, when we're spending public monies, we need to go through procurement processes and um, we will go back to market. But the, getting the telemetry on these is really, really important, making sure the data matches the, um, the theory. So um, as I said, we will be getting the telemetry on this vehicle, monitoring its introduction into service and then uh, making any tweaks. But rest assured, the, the future of all transport is electric. Um, the world's biggest battery manufacturer in the last uh, month has announced that they have doubled the energy density in batteries. Now that makes uh, electrically powered flight feasible. Um, and they reckon they're going to be producing them this year. So the, the future is with electric. It is just how and how quickly we adopt that to make sure that we have zero capability gaps and that we, um, we keep pace with the technology, but also an eye to the change. The speed of change is accelerating and we don't want to commit to a path and find out we're half a generation behind. So we are monitoring very carefully and we're working with stakeholders to stay at the forefront of technology. Last one from me, <laughs> sorry. Uh, when, is, uh, when is the truck ready to hit the road? Is it ready to go out to the zones now or is it a few months down? No, so it'll be a couple of months and we, we've got to work with our stakeholders. We have a large, um, so we, we've got obligations with regard to regulation. So the heavy vehicle regulator is quite curious about this um, and registration. Then we have to train our training cohort. Rosenbaum will be working hand in hand with us to bring our staff up to speed on everything that's in this. Um, it's, it's a real step away from the uh, manual um, type of, of appliances we're used to and electrically controlled stuff so uh, we need to treat that technology gently and ease ourselves into it then we'll roll it out over a longer period of time and that's yet to be consulted with the firefighters union and the entirety of the workforce so that we um, we get it out there we get the telemetry and we get it operational uh, basically it will live at number 10 station, so the Acton Fire Station. And um, so that's our longest ceiling, but obviously I want it out and operational as soon as it is safe to do so and as soon as we've done the induction for new plant so that we can get operational data. So I'm, because we're taking such a um, measured approach to the introduction of this, I'm not really prepared to hazard a guess, but um, early in the new year, I would like to see it 
out there responding to jobs for Canberrans.